Uh, my name is DK. Uh, I'm here with uh, Open Drone Map. Uh, I also work for HOT, my, but I'm not talking about that today so much, just a little bit. Can't help it. Um, but I'm talking about mapping uh, with UAVs or drones. Um, and the tech work that we're doing, that we've been doing for many years, uh, to kind of get from, from nothing, basically from nothing to data on the map uh, in a low cost way. Um, and so uh, we, I call it an end-to-end -end workflow. Uh, it's actually not fully end-to-end. -end. This is kind of just like the first part of it. Um, but when, we, when we're talking about it in this context here, we're talking about technically three, three pieces of software that uh, I'm heavily involved in. Open drone map, uh, open aerial map, and open street map. Very aptly named tools. Um, what does that really mean? What does that look like kind of in the broad sense? Uh, we're talking about creating drone imagery or, or generating drone imagery or producing it, uh, using processing tools to uh, turn that into data maps, uh, pixels that can be drawn over um, uh, and, and served, and then getting that, the, the, the imagery into OpenStreetMap. Um, uh, just as a quick start, like why, why drones? We've been working with a lot of satellite imagery for a long time and they're huge and they can provide a ton of information. Um, well, uh, drones are relatively cheap, especially compared to satellite imagery, as uh, many here are probably aware. Um, they're really accessible. They're not easy to use necessarily. I mean, I'd say they're easy to use, but they're, they're, you, I could probably get anybody on here flying a drone um, and the technology is pretty good. Um, and as you can see here, this is a, a colleague from 2016 flying a, a like $25,000 drone, uh, no problem. Uh, it was completely automated. All you have to do is throw it. Um, they're generally hackable sometimes, depending on the model, depending on what, uh, you know, what we're working with. Uh, but of course, there are some limitations. Um, there's limited coverage. They can't fly like a satellite image could get. Um, and we're working on that. But uh, there's also legal limitations. Um, and often, we are actually working with proprietary hardware, which can be hard to work with. Um, so just to get started, talking about the software, uh, what is Open Drone Map? Uh, Open Drone Map is a mature ecosystem of tools. Um, it's actively developed. It's well supported. It's free and open source. Um, and it's available on opendronemap.org. What does it actually do? Um, so we're flying a drone. We can point a camera down and take a bunch of pictures with a lot of overlap. Uh, and then we can take those pictures and process them into three-dimensional and 2D products, geospatial products, um, in, in a variety of formats. Uh, and we can do a lot of stuff with them. You can do measurements. Uh, um, uh, you can do some indices and other kind of interesting analyses. Uh, you can do really fun things like create 1.4 billion points of cloud optimized uh, in a cloud optimized point cloud. Um, from that, also you can 3D print your own house. Uh, this is actually not my house; this is my boss's house or my colleague's house, my old boss's house. Um, uh, you can do DSMs. You can create DSMs uh, through texturing, um, and then what we're talking about here today: uh, orthorectified uh, uh, maps, uh, aerial imagery. Um, how it works, I'm not going to go through this too deeply, uh, but I'll thank some of our co colleagues here at Mapillary, or at Meta, um, for developing OpenSFM, uh, which is a core piece of uh, software that we use to um, take all the cameras like they use with Mapillary, uh, 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 tie them together with points, and then just massively increase the number of points, uh, mesh that, texture that, and then flatten that into a map basically, in a nutshell. Um, we're also uh, a nonprofit. Uh, we believe in software as commons. Um, we think that what Open Drone Map is doing is, is core technology for what we're doing here. Um, and we want to support that. And we also want to support uh, other technology that supports us as well. Um, so like I said, get a drone, capture some images, or you can get some sample data sets, uh, download the, the software, and just run it. Select the images and run it. You'll see here. Uh, there's a web, or there's a, uh, a Windows installer, there's a website, or you can host your own website. Um, uh, you select the images, you, you can do a lot of, there's a ton of options, like a million options, probably too many options, but you can tweak, uh, and then you sit down and wait, and uh, you get this beautiful image um, uh, in, in WebODM, um, and you can see it's orthorectified, it's aligned to, to a base map, um, 
Uh, you can see on the bottom there that there's this little OSM Digitize plugin. There is, so there's a bunch of plugins on WebODM as well. Um, op uh, the OSM Digitize is great if you're like hosting WebODM as a service. Um, if you're not, if you're just working from your home computer, then the data is local and it's ephemeral. And when you're, if you're digitizing an OSM, that's not as ideal to prove provenance of the data uh, uh, of the aerial imagery. It's like you were just mapping and people are like, well, where did you get this? Uh, and so that's where having a public repository of imagery um, comes into play, and that's Open Aerial Map. Um, you, can, you can connect, there's a plugin for Open Aerial Map on WebODM. Um, you just get your token, your uh, third party API token from Open Aerial Map, uh, plug that into the WebODM, um, then you'll see this little button that says share to ODM. Uh, and so, you, same process, collect the images process, use the plugin, fill in the submission form. And then you wait for the images to upload to our servers. Uh, and these are my beautiful cats. Um, and then you see now these images that these, this, these drone flights that you've processed in Open Drone Map on WebODM uh, are made available on WebODM and or on Open Aerial Map. Um, and what's great about that is uh, it's been cloud optimized. It's been processed into a cloud optimized GeoTIFF, which WebODM or Open Drone Map already does. So it's um, that's moot. But you can then you know serve that to anybody, and it's publicly available. The images, uh, anybody who's uploading to Open Aerial Map are going to agree that the images are in CC BY, a, a form of CC BY license, with an explicit waiver for OSM tracing. Um, so all images that are on Open Aerial Map are available for tracing in, uh, in OpenStreetMap. Um, you can download the, the GeoTIFF, work with it in QGIS, whatever. You can just straight up open it in ID or JOSM, um, or you can grab the TMS link if you want to use it for like a tasking manager or something like that. Um, and then you can see here, uh, that um, I, I flew this actually in uh, 2015 or 2016. Uh, this is the Cleveland Metro Park Zoo, uh, and um, with, yeah, in like three flights, and we stitched it all together. Um, I think it was like om almost a thousand images, um, and, and you can go in ahead and you can map it in ID or JOSM or whatever. I think I went through this really fast, way faster than I thought. So uh, we, I think we have a bit of time. Uh, does anyone have any questions? <laughs> Yes. Um. Thank you, all the volunteers. Helping. Is, is there a base layer that shows um, where coverage for uh, Open Aerial Map exists? Like, I, I turn the layer on in ID all the time just to see if something's there. Um, but it would be cool to be able for to like see. For like the whole body yeah. of Open Aerial Map? Right, yes. like even just a vector layer or something simple. Um, you, you can get uh, the entire mosaic of Open Aerial Map uh, with a, uh, a single TMS link, actually. Okay. Um, it's, uh, we, we worked with partners at Contour, uh, K-O-N-T-U-R. Um, and they they've been hosting that uh, that mosaic. Um, I don't have I can't like I'm not going to give you a TMS link off the top of my head, but okay. yeah, thank yeah, you. we can we can find it. Any other questions? Yeah, we've got one in the back or two in the back there. Thanks. Uh, so when you fly a mission like the one you showed um, just now, do you do you fly that by hand? Or do you automate? No, it's too? automated, fully automated. Okay. Uh, I, did, I didn't get into like flight planning software, um, but there is there there is free and open source flight planning software. Um, if you have a drone that supports that, um, called Ardu Pilot, I believe, um, and you can if you're you can like build your own drone at this point uh, with with open hardware um, autopilot. Uh, it's all like in. Uh, it's like PX4 or something. I can't remember, but yeah, uh, that's all automated, and you can set like the overlap, both vertical and horizontal, you can set like whether you're flying Nadir like straight down or at an angle. There's like, a, and there's a lot of resources at community.opendronemap.org for like how to best fly to like maximize like the type of flight that you're doing. Is that um, also typically supported by uh, sort of entry level commercial drones? As in the ones you yes, would see around? Yes, and, you know, and no, it depends. DJI sometimes is hard to work with, but um, generally, if you're a, a lot of those have their own autopilot software, and as long as you're getting images that are georeferenced or you're getting um, ground control points, then um, you can georeference it and 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 get something that's orthorectified and 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 you can put on a map. Thanks. And there's one in front right here. 
Um, it is the georeferencing done just purely from the GPS on the drone, or is is yes. it possible to? So it's not being like snapped to existing uh, OSM or other imagery. No, so it's effect. yeah. So it, there's a few ways to do it. Um, and we have some, there's like some libraries to be like, if you've got some standard drones where it's like, okay, we have, it's like 16 centimeters from the, from the GPS unit to the camera lens. Um, so you can do that offset. Um, but then also you can just use like GCP points. So if you're like, you can literally like put out big tarps on the ground and, and then have those be well defined with, um, what's that called? Kinetic um, RTK or whatever. It's only 11, uh, 212, so. So you mentioned as one of the downsides of ODM is that there's a lot of regulation, there's a lot of regulations around flying a drone. Yeah. So is there resources somewhere on the wiki to help you chase down what the regulations are in specific areas? Oh gosh. I don't know. Um, generally speaking, since we're in the U.S., like that's all handled by the um, uh, by the FAA. Thank you. Um, uh, we work, you know, we're working in a lot of different places sometimes where there's like different levels, and it's it's it gets very complicated. Um, however, in many ways, if you're if you're just an individual that's got your own drone, as long as your drone is under 300 grams, including the camera and you're following kind of the basic guidelines that are available from the, F the FAA, you're generally pretty good to go. Just avoid airports and keep under like 300 feet. Uh, and I'm not a lawyer, so don't, don't take this as, a, as an advice. <laughs> Up here in the front. Oh yeah, and don't find the national parks. Is, uh, is there a zoom that's prioritized on these flight programs, or are you trying to get different zoom levels of imagery on every flight? Um, you can fly at two different heights. Like, and so a lot of the flight planning software will be like, if you're flying at 150 feet with this, da 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 da, -da and your camera, and you've, you've sort of defined the camera's um, sort of um, CCD, or like the, the camera, I don't remember what the word is, sorry. Um, then it'll kind of estimate like you're gonna get a ground sample at distance of about like you know five centimeters or whatever, and so you can kind of you can define it however you need your resolution to be, and you can even like fly at different levels, and it will improve the the software um, as it, and, and then it'll use the highest resolution in the texturing, so you'll always get the highest resolution image. Cool, thanks. Actually, is, cause is there a goal to create a unified, like stitched together? map of everyone's contributions? And if so, wouldn't there have to be like a level of crap collaboration on height to like stitch together that zoom level? That would be, that's a lofty goal. There's a lot of land out there. <laughs> um, but I don't think that's currently a goal. Um, it's really like, let's get what we can and um, you know, map what we can. Because people are gonna use it for very different purposes. We have people who are using it for um, real estate, or people who are using it for general use, for um, ecology, for whatever, for military. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. All right, I think I'll, I'll hand it off to the next one. Yes, we need to move on to the next talk. Uh, thank you very much. It was very thank good. You. And then